And I believe the Holy Ghost is calling us, his church, back to the place of true communion and fellowship. When I hear or read in scriptures and I see an instruction that God has given, it resonates in my spirit. When I see and hear somebody say, this is what God has said, and it doesn't resonate in my spirit, I know there's something wrong with it. I may have no proof right now, but I'm going back to the scriptures to search. And if it's going to take me years to labor to get to that truth, I will do it. And I have done that. I've had some verses of scriptures that took me six years to finally become comfortable with. That flow that I'm speaking about, that, you know, the outpouring of grace from the heart of a believer does not just come because you have listened to somebody's message. It doesn't. You can listen to a thousand messages and a thousand people say a thousand different things. But there's only one truth. And a believer who is in touch with the Holy Spirit knows it. I worry that for many of us, we have, we have learned the wrong things. And we have learned to silence the voice of the Spirit. Because what the Spirit of God is indicating or saying does not agree with what we desire or what we feel. And so the more you silence the voice of the Spirit, the more you pacify your conscience when it is saying to you, this is wrong, don't go that way, this is what you ought to do, that guy is right, even though what he said was not presented in the manner in which you wanted to hear it, but he is right. That many of us, you know, we just, we sear our consciences without realizing you are hardening your heart. And the harder your heart becomes, the more irresponsive you are when the spirit stimulates your mind. You just don't respond because you have desensitized yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's so sad that we are in an age where prophets of God, pastors, teachers, apostles, and people who call themselves by those names have learned the trick of desensitizing people to the voice of God so that the people will listen to them. So subtly they are supplanting the place of the Holy Spirit in the lives of people. But the funny thing is that God's people love it. And they seem to prefer that kind of ministry, not realizing that this is the ministry of death. Life is a flow. Growth is too. My boys had this habit in their room until we repainted and I felt very bad that we had to take some of those things out. Right from when they were young, they would stand by the wall and mark their height and put the date. And after a while, they would come back again and mark and put the date. And you could just see the gradual movement. But there's no way any one of us can plan two inches growth in six months. Can you plan it? No? It's not in your hands. It just happens. It results. Christian growth is just like that. It happens. All you need is right nourishment, right kind of exercises. That's all. 
and go through the Bible, that's all God is asking of us. So when I read through something like this, these 12 verses that we find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, you know, I know you read it, I read it, you read it. And to many of us, yeah, I was here. It's packed with truth. Which I hope the Spirit of God will give us room to expand on. Understand that if you are genuinely born again, that the laws of God are written in your heart. And that means that under grace there are laws. Are you still here with me? What did I say? And where are those laws written? Your heart. Not something external that God is saying conform to, but something internal that he says transform. The transformation begins from inside. So if you look at the, the two words used in Romans 12, conform and transform, they don't mean the same thing. One is suschematizo. I think so. Please, you check it and let me know if I'm right. One is suschematizo, and the other is metamorpho. Suschematizo has to do with conforming to something external. Metamorpho has to do with, with a change that arises from within, from something base or lower into something What's the meaning of the word suschematizo? To conform to oneself. Or to conform to another's pattern. So if he says, do not conform to this world, now he's saying to you that you and the world are not the same. So to want to fashion your life after the system of this world is to want to act contrary to who you are. Are you following this? Metamorpho. To change to another form. To transfigure like Jesus in the transfiguration. The light and the glory that poured out of the body of Jesus Christ was not new. It was hidden. So what Jesus simply did was that he took the curtain away and manifested the glory that was hidden. So in this case, it is, a, it is not you becoming something else, but you transforming. See if there's something else about, about that. Mm -hmm. metamorphosis like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly a caterpillar is it doesn't look like a butterfly but it's his nature thank you and that's that's this is what god requires of his own people god is not saying conform conform to me no he says don't conform to the world because you are of my stock but you are not of their stock you're not like them anymore. You're a new creature. You are different. You belong to a new filer. You're not of the same class. Don't aspire to be like them. Don't desire to, 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 to assimilate their fashions and their culture. But you, look inward. Look inward. Settle within you who you are. Within you, there is 
resident a glory that must come into manifestation. Within you, there has been an implantation of divine nature. So when he says, but be ye transformed, he is saying, look, move from that which is hidden and let it develop and flow freely. I didn't get born again to become born again. I got born again to manifest the nature of God. So whatever it is therefore that God through the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ commands his people, the church. The commandment is not something that he is asking you to conform to. Are you following this? The commandment is simply a commandment of saying to you, this is who you are, be it. I'm not saying struggle to follow this path. This is your natural settled path. Walk in it. And the only reason for the commandment is because of the unrenewed mind. So that your own renewed mind will not play a trick on you. So the commandments of God are like signposts. That shows you your boundaries and your limits. And tells you when you are moving away from who you are. When you are becoming what you ought not. And then you look at the commandments and say, oh, I've lost my way. And then you come back to who you really are. It flows from inside your spirit, man. That's who you are in truth. There's a treasure house of plenty inside your spirit, man. And until you unlock that treasure house, nobody is going to see the treasures that are hidden there. There's a wealth that has been deposited inside you. Because you are the new creature of God in Christ Jesus. There is power that is resident in you. It is simply latent. God wants you to, to, to change it. Convert it to kinetic energy. Make it mobile. Let it flow. It's inside you. It's inside me. A good example is, I don't have to keep praying to God, God, please give me the power to overcome this sin because the power to overcome that sin is already resident inside you. It's there. Locked within your heart. But if you do not submit to the forces that make transformation possible, then that power will be trapped within Trapped. Don't ever look at yourself the same. You've heard me say this a thousand times and more. The silly excuse that people give, it's my upbringing, that's how I am. Every member of my family is like that. So if I'm like that, it's not what is it called. What family do you belong to? In, in God's family, there are family traits. And his commandments show his family traits. You see, when, when he said, look, love your enemy, pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you, and all of that, and then says, look, if you are a peacemaker and you do A, B, C, then you show that you are the children of God. Why? He just listed the family trait of God's children. So if you open your mouth and say, I am a child of God. I am born by the Spirit of God. And I gave my life to Christ at what date? 2000, year 2000, November or whatever. And the person who has been looking at you all those years 
does not see the family traits of God makes you a liar because you have just shown that you are a hypocrite you don't resemble who you say you are you don't resemble who you say you are the most powerful testimony of the cross is when people who live around those who have had an encounter with the cross testify that a change has taken place in this man's life is the most powerful testimony of the cross what's the testimony today in general have you ever heard somebody say if the way Wale is is how Christians are I don't want to be a Christian have you heard that before now you discover that such lives become impediments no, no, is it impediments yes yeah on the way of the Holy Spirit to save other people that's what this is about really yeah the life you project either makes you an enemy of God or God's friend I'm not talking about what God deposited inside you when you got saved that's real and genuine Or the projection. The projection matters to God. Notice, when I started, I said, toward God and toward those, them that are without. Those outside the camp of Christ. Even in the house, there are many people, when you, when you hear and see the things that they manifest their deeds, their words, and you are able to get into their minds sometimes by the things they say. You doubt if they are born again. Am I right? Have you encountered such believers that you can beat your chest and say, this one is not born again? The reason for that is because this is abnormal. And let me say this, in all honesty, many of such people will be lost on that day. There will be no room for them in the courts of heaven. No room. I don't know who I was with of recent, and we were discussing, and um, I'm not too sure, I don't, I don't know if think is in church. But anyway about parable of the talent the people that the lord gave talents to were his people right yes. his servants and he went away when he returned he returned in judgment right the judgment, was it intended to condemn or to bless? Thank you. Will God judge his church? The judgment of the church, is it intended to condemn or to bless? Thank you. So, judgment is a good thing for us. But not for all of us. Because when he came, he saw one. He gave. That one hid what was given to him. What did the Lord say to, to that one? You're wicked, unfaithful. Where did he send him? Outer darkness. But he was a servant of God.
All the other three were blessed. I think there are four of them, I think. I'm not too sure now. But all the others were blessed, except that one. You know, Jesus said, who, who lights a lamp and hides it where? Under the bushel. The only reason you light a lamp is because you want its light to do what? To shine. Look at somebody beside you. Somebody beside you. And ask, are you saved? Don't answer. It's just a question. Then say, if you are saved, you are not saved for yourself. You are saved to shine the light of God. The light of God. We read this last week. Um, John one let's go back there and we'll come back quickly to first thessalonians 4 verse 4 in him was what was in him life and the life was the what the light of men what i say let's see and the light shineth where in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, when a man gets born again, is that man lit by the light of God? Now, when a man gets born again, therefore, it means light, lit, being lit by the light of God means that you now have the life of God. Is that right? All right. So, I got born again and the life of God is inside me. That life, was, is it in me to bless me and bless me only? Right? The life in me. Is it in me to be hidden? It is in me, and if it is truly in me and working as it ought, will men see the fruit of that life? Yes, they will. 